Here's our wood for tonight, guys. Hey guys, let's go ahead and give you a little look around camp here. There is my Teton Explorer 4000, the pack we used for the trip hanging from the tree. For those of you who haven't seen, I use one of my paracord, braided paracord ridge lines. I just wrap it around a tree. This knot right here is a figure eight with a bite, and then I hook my carabiner onto the pack and onto my loop. That keeps my pack up off the ground and it makes it easy to reach in, grab things when I want to grab them. Over here we have my Shemag with various stages of unpacking on it. Uh, Jeff Robb, Common Sense Camper, had a great idea that whenever he goes camping, he lays out his shemag, and then when they're unpacking things, everything goes on the shemag. That's his rule, everything goes on the shemag. And I've actually taken to that, and I like it a lot. So I take that from Jeff, uh, everything on the shemag when I'm unpacking. Over here, guys, we have my hammock is all set up inside the bug net. Tonight we are not using the MSS, we're only using a wool blanket and a sleeping pad. It's the Harbor Freight wool blanket, I think it's 80-20 or 70-30. I may not even need that though, it's very warm here in uh, western New York. There's our tarp as our ground mat. And then I have the Yukon Outfitters tarp up over that. It's not supposed to rain at all, but I've been around long enough, <laughs> I'm not going to be fooled by that prediction. Here we have our wood. And this is wood that I've 
chopped up and collected throughout the whole spring and summer season, guys. So this wood you see, I've, uh, I've chopped it down and I've made a lean-to. I've made a couple of different shelters, um, tripods. Usually in the beginning when I start coming out again after winter camping, maybe the springtime, I just start taking down uh, dead trees and cutting them up. And then throughout the summer, when I come here, the spring and summer, it's all set. There is the Ontario Kukri and the Husqvarna multi-purpose forest axe, two of my favorite cutting tools. And that's what's out here with us today. I've used a combination of both to process wood here today so far. And then here's our fire, soon to be fire. There's my pencil lead size sticks or my twigs. Uh, in the middle, they're kind of out of order, but there's my pencil lead or my twigs. There's my pencil sized. In the middle is uh, the wood that we've batoned and split up, which is going to be more fuel after these get lit. In the fire, we have a split log here, which is our platform. So to keep the fire off the ground, we're going to start the fire right on that. And this is our brace. So this thick piece of wood's going to assist us as a brace. Uh, we have a shovel over here. Where is it? There it is. Uh, typical garden shovel. It's heavy duty though. I like the way it digs, clears out the fire, things like that. And here is the pot stand that I made. We have that fork that I stuck into the ground. Then we have this long stick laying right in there. Then I cut out a notch at the end for the bale on my bush pot to hang in so it'll hang right over the fire. So what do you say guys, let's, uh, let's get started and make a fire here and have some fun. Okay guys, we're going to be using birch bark here for our fire today. Thought we'd go that route and I've already started scraping. But what you want to do with birch bark is it has the oils, the flammable oils in there. Let's grab our Mora Classic number 2 here. And we're just going to scrape on the white side. Just go ahead and scrape that bark. You guys see that okay? So then we'll have an area that looks like that. And that's going to take, a ferro rod is going to hit that and that'll take and then we're going to put smaller pieces of birch bark on it after the ferro rod hits it. So let's move, move it over into our platform and take a look.
once the uh, fire starts, excuse me, once the fire starts poking through your sticks, guys, that's when you can add the next level of fuel that you have. 